Good afternoon. How are we doing, guys? Good. How are you? Doing well. How about you? Doing good. Doing good. Can't complain. Back uh, school started for uh, both boys. So, you know, my one up in college and the younger one's back at school this week. And uh, um, everything else is, is pretty good. How about you guys? Good? Yeah, I didn't even think about the fact that school's starting back up. Yeah, we're doing good. I, I, I'm Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, welcome. We are the reboot. We are um, every Wednesday, one thirty Eastern time, in the whatever time zone David Luft is in. I forget. He's two hours behind us, I think. Central. Oh, I'm always behind you guys. Exactly. I'll never <laughs> catch up. <laughs> one um, time, so I'm above you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I am Brian Bratchett with BNL PC Solutions in uh, Long Island, New York, and I'm joined by this guy. Whatever. I am Dave Group with Windstar Technologies in Culpeper, Virginia. And David Luft with LDD Consulting in Albuquerque, New Mexico, the chili capital of the world. Oh, wow. <laughs> you mean like cold or oh, chili, like chili peppers? Like chili peppers. Chili peppers. See, that's the, that's the Culpeper logo is a chili pepper. Culpeper, Virginia. Right. Interesting. Stuff. <laughs> so, All right, guys. So today we're going to talk about the... The Federal Trade Commission, the FTC safeguard rules, and the um, the amendments to uh, to this um, rule that was put into so the rule the rule the, the safeguards rule took effect in two thousand three, um, and after some you know changes in in technology and and, and public commentary, uh, they amended this rule set in twenty twenty one just to make sure that these rules kept pace with the current technology. Um, so they preserved the flexibility of the original rule, and the revised rule now provides more concrete guidance for business. And I think the, um, you know, we're, we're for, for our purposes, we're, we work with, with car dealerships, and, and there's a, you know, the, every car dealership, used, new, big, small, across the country, uh, needs to follow these, um, the, the amendments to these elements. And, and it, it's, it's pretty in-depth on, on what, these these dealerships it, and, and need to do in, yeah it's pretty in depth but i think it's pretty much in line with uh, you know a lot of the other compliance kind of things right 100 percent, 100 percent. there's yeah. nothing out here that, that 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 anyone would say why do we have to do this or i knew nothing about this and and it's kind of stuff like, that what is that you, or what do you exactly. mean we're gonna do this yeah yeah, yeah. Right. there's there's going to be yeah i mean you know there's things that that um and it's not cheap there's there's some consulting that has to be done depending on on how the infrastructure is set up i mean i've i've been talking to some high level dealerships uh that know nothing about this and and it's as recently, amazing as this week yeah. it, it really is um and and then there's people that say oh we have it covered we're doing this this and this and i said you you're not even you're not even touching the subject you're, you're so far removed from it and i think it's important to understand and again guys this has to be you have to be in compliance by December 9th, twenty twenty two, um, it, and it's it's not a, an opt in. It's a it's a federal requirement. But who's 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 putting teeth into this? Is this the FTC? The Federal Trade Commission, yeah. So they're the ones who would determine compliance or not. Mm -hmm. Yep. And are they are they doing investigations and spot assessments and such? I would I would have to uh, strongly say that they are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you know, curious why we're not hearing more about this or they're not. Well, you know, you are. I mean, you look at NADA.org for the for the automobile industry. I mean, it, it's it's all over the place. Um, and they have a listing on their website of of what businesses are required to that that fall under these guidelines. Um, and, and for, you know, the, the clients that we deal with, it's it's 100 percent the auto industry. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 these these amended elements are kind of what we do for other clients in some capacity. But again, it, it, it just, you know, we have, we're having meetings with, with clients and prospects to go over. This isn't something that you can do and say, can you get this done for me tomorrow? Like, no, that there's, right. you know. All right. So what is it that give me, break it down for me, Ryan? Like, what do yeah. we got to start doing? What, what so, are the things? So there's, they added, I think nine elements to the, um, secure, so your security program. So a lot, a lot of companies don't have a security program, number one, even though it was part of the original safeguards rule. So 
a couple of different things have to happen. One of the things is is um, you have to uh, designate a what they call a qualified individual that's going to implement and supervise this entire security program. Uh, All right, so that, like a security officer or something. Yeah, and it, it can be it can be uh, an employee. It doesn't have to be. It can be mm -hmm. uh, an affiliate. They're the ones who take provider. on the 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 initiative in the company, Correct. basically. Correct. And kind of like in HIPAA, they're the you know the the I forget the, what we call those folks. Security they, officer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then so, but that that person's role is 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 needs to oversee everything mm -hmm. else that falls below it. And we can kind of touch on that now. Like, so um, one of the things you have to do th that you're required to do is you have to conduct a, a risk assessment. Okay. And um, so that risk assessment, I mean, we do that all the time for clients. We do that twice a year for our exi existing clients. We do that for prospects. Um, so, so the risk assessment, it can be done by your, your IT company. It can be done in-house. You can hire a third party to do it. It doesn't matter. Um, but after that risk assessment is done, that's where you, determine you know foreseeable risks threats internal external to the security confidentiality and integrity of the customer information so you got to realize these dealerships are pulling cia people. what are you talking about <laughs> they're pulling you know personal information from from their consumers their customers right you want to run a credit check well you yeah for legal know? or for financial purposes right for loans and stuff is that what you're right. saying mm -hmm. right, right. so bigger than P PCI compliance, but it's yeah, not. It's kind of yeah, same vein, but I, I'm trying to understand. So, all right, so we got to have a written information security policy. It's got to be right. Oh yeah, that, that well, that's where this all, you know, this- That's this what we're whole, doing from this assessment. Exactly, I mean, the, okay. the policy has to be, you know, you call it your WISP, you call it whatever you want, but you have to have that written information security policy. Um, and, and then you have to, part of it is also reviewing, amending, changing, and testing that 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 policy. So your risk assessment is done. You you identify um, these risks, threats, uh, and and then um, so the the rule requires you to conduct periodic assessments. Uh, mm -hmm. So as you, as you document these changes, you you still need to conduct these these then these these um assessments. Okay. Then you have to design uh, and implement safeguards uh, to control the risks that were just identified through this assessment. So through your information security program, um, now here's a list. Of, here's a list of things that that fall under these safeguards that that are okay. subsequent right. to your, your lay them on me, brother. <laughs> so you have to implement uh, and periodically review access controls. So they have to determine who has access to what customer information um, and uh, reconsider on a regular basis whether they still have a legit, legit business need for it. So that could be someone in accounting that has access to um you know this 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 sensitive information now what controls are in place to to uh, you know make sure that 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 hasn't changed doesn't change um do they need access to it uh, is it a group is it is how are these permissions set up is it role based is it based on you know is it time out after 6 months um now that's that's controls you know we, we well, so find, that that's 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 getting into the nitty gritty there Brian I think what you're saying there is that has to follow their policy Right. Well, it does. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. basically the concept is they're mm -hmm. going to come up with a business policy and they're going to say, look, here's the controls that we're using for these things. And now we got to follow it. And here's how we're proven we're following it. Is what is, you're that's how you're controlling the risk is, is yes. Yeah. You're, you're and so you know. you're talking right now, I'm going to equate it. I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to ask you questions for specific reasons, Brian, mm -hmm. because I think this ties back to a lot of different stuff that we talk about on a regular basis. And I'm interested in this. I don't know everything I need to know. So mm -hmm. you're helping me. Okay. So please, uh, understand that I'm not trying to take over, but that's identity management, right? We're tying this back to zero trust and into, you know, which is becoming as an industry standard, the SASE zero trust model is becoming the go-to, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the layers of defense, identity management or that system access control is the first thing. How long do they have access? Is it only on demand? Is it all the time? You know, all those things matter. Right. Mm -hmm. How do we prove they're who they are? Do we know they're who they are? Are they on a device they say they're on? Is it authorized? You know, all that stuff. Right. All mm -hmm. right. Then what else? Uh, you need to know what you have and where you have it. So they say that this is um, just a. That's a, your information, your assets. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Conduct a periodic inventory of data, uh, noting where it's collected, stored, transmitted, 
Uh, you have to have an accurate list of all the systems, devices, platforms, uh, and personnel, staff. I mean, not, it's not just the... the, mm -hmm. the it's everything. Yes, it, it's everything. Um, yeah. And then you have to design those safeguards to respond with resilience. Um, okay. And so when they're doing that risk assessment, I'm assuming what we're talking about there is we're kind of taking a look at those three things, like, you know, uh, how likely is things to happen? What is it that we're looking at? And what what are we talking about, right? And then what happens if it gets breached or or, or risked? And then what's the likelihood of that? What's the impact? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, and exactly. So exactly. You, you start with that assessment, but then you may have to come back and write your thing your, and then go right back and do another assessment. It, is what I'm here. Only, that's, just that's to, exactly okay. what you need to do. Okay, um, cool. Another thing is, uh, which which we talk about a lot too, is in, in, in encrypting customer information on your system um, and when it's in transit. So uh, there is a, a uh, caveat here that, that if it's not feasible to use encryption, you have to secure it by using an effective uh, alternative controls approved method. So let's say that that your sensitive information is, um, you know, it's, it's encrypted in transit, but maybe not be encrypted at rest. And I'm just, you know, mm -hmm, sure. not just giving an example here. Uh, maybe because that, of such and such. Exactly. Reason. And maybe that that well, the only people that have access to this data, they're required to do, you know, multi-factor authentication before they look at this data, and then and then that, you know, whatever. So, if, but, or but we're putting if, DLP policies, and it's whatever it's, you want to do is tagged with information that. rights management. And if they don't have this level of uh, access, they can't touch it anyway. Or but you, and 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 that's so so if you. Don't use encryption, and but you don't have it documented that this is what you're doing instead. Then, then, then you're not in compliance. You actually you have to have that. Okay. Documented. It okay. seems to me, you know, documentation and proving, right, mm -hmm. the ability oh, to yeah. validate everything is the common thing I'm hearing you bring back, and that's common again through all these compliance things, and that's the one place where most businesses fail because they put it all in play, but then they don't go back to see if it's working. Well, they, yeah, right. You have that on the calendar to, you know, quarterly to do this. You're going to do it. And and you'll, again, there's always something that's going to change that you have to amend and, and rewrite. Uh, that's or, right. But with, without I just had that, that conversation with my team today. We talked about Microsoft 365 hardening and how every quarter we got to go back and look again. Yep. Same yep. thing. Right. Same thing. Yeah, you, you really have to audit the stuff we're doing too. We have to audit of course. it. We know well, because people are going to make mistakes. Hey, this isn't just about. I mean, guys, we know this, right? But we're talking to the public now. We're trying to educate. And I mean, it's not just about the stuff that's in the dealership, right? It's about their vendors. It's about their supply stream, right? Those people have to be vetted now. Well, that's on here too. That's yeah, on you here haven't too. gotten to that part yet, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of running through this list. And then no, we you're cool, it. man. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not trying not to all. squirrel you. I'm, I'm, not at all. Uh, they tell you you need to assess your app. So if there, if your uh, company or dealership uh, does any internal uh, development of its own applications yep. Big uh, time. and they're storing or accessing uh, uh, and transmitting customer information that has to be audited regularly and documented. Um, uh, implement multi-factor authentication for anyone using customer information on your system. So um, I know right now that a lot of dealerships do not do this. Mm -hmm. um, so they have to, you know, multi-factor authentication is, is something that, that um, we all know what it is. It's that, you know, you, whether you're banking, you get a, a ping on your phone, or you're going checking email somewhere, you get, you get a notification, you have to approve. They, you, they want that second factor of authentication other than your password. They need to know um, that, it's, that it's you accessing this data, which is recorded and logged also. So we can see, you know, if we have to go back a year and see who accessed certain data on a certain day, we can go back and, and go through those logs. And, and hey, you know what that is, Brian? That's sim. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my favorite word. I'm yep. sorry. Go ahead. Yep. Nope, going. You're good. <laughs> um, you have to have a policy, written policy on on the disposal of customer information securely. So um, uh, you have to securely dispose of customer information no later than two years after your most recent use of it uh, to serve the customer. And the only exceptions to this are if you have a legitimate business need or a legal requirement to hold on to it. Um, wow. So that's wow. That that's actually kind of different, right? Like, you know, in my experience, it's been, you know, related maybe to like medical providers or lawyers where they're they're needing to retain that stuff long periods of time, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas these guys are like, look, man, you can have it for a little bit, then get rid of it. Right. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. All that's right. Interesting. Um 
Now, this is kind of what we've been talking about in, in, a, in a roundabout way, too, is uh, anticipate and evaluate changes to your information system or network. So changes every to Every time your, a new software package comes into exactly. play, every time a new yeah. vendor comes into play, every time any the company adds a new server, has that created a new security? Yeah, that's right. So that's, then, and that's, um, they, the mentioned, they mentioned in the rule, too, that if you're creating your own applications, so if the, which I don't know of many car dealerships that actually do that. I don't either. Right. That's going to be huge if you have to create your own applications. Mm -hmm. and I mean, that, that's, uh, I mean, again, those things, every one of these things are completely in line with with all kinds of, of the different compliance pillars that we've been, you know, banging on for years. Uh, I'm not feeling still that any of this is really out of the norm of, of compliance regulation. You know what no. I'm saying? Like, no. it's out of the norm for a lot of businesses to have this stuff already. But uh, the need and the, you know, the, they're not asking for anything crazy. Um, I don't. I think it's all good stuff. Keep going. I'm sorry. I'm we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get to some of the, yeah. <laughs> you know, I know. Um, I, I'm sure that, that there's pain involved. Yes. Along with the, what you mentioned earlier with the SIM, you need to be able to uh, maintain, I, I think this is what, what, where a SIM will come in handy, uh, maintain a log of authorized users activity and keep an eye out for unauthorized access. Uh, you know, you can, you can, you can shoehorn DLP uh, into their access rights management, um, mm -hmm. but, but being able, you know, just being able to audit, users activity and, and maybe there's somebody that left and they weren't properly disabled and, and, and you can, you know, you get a login from them after they're gone. So you have to be able to audit and pull that data. Yep. So that all falls yeah. under, that's all part of the, um, the heading of designing and implementing safeguards that are controlling the risk assessments that we identified. That's, that's one subsection there. Now they're now, okay. now they're, now they're getting into the other, elements right oh so, man so, yeah that, how, that how many just, more elements wow <laughs> there's uh, uh about a half dozen more so now all right cool um regular now this is kind of again it all it kind of falls into play with what we've been talking about but now this one is a little you know uh gonna hit some dealers harder than others um uh regular regularly monitor and test the effectiveness of your safeguards so you have to uh test your procedures uh and detect actual and attempted attacks and they can you can it could be accomplished through continuous monitoring of your system and if you don't implement that you must conduct annual penetration testing as well as the vulnerability assessments including system wide scans every 6 months okay so if you if if you're not testing your procedures um regularly and and documenting those tests then you must um conduct annual penetration testing uh, and, and on top of that, like I said, the, the six months, every six months vulnerability um, assessments and, and documented for all the, you know, against all the known vulnerabilities. Um, and in addition, uh, you have to test whenever there are material changes to your operations or business arrangements. And whenever there are circumstances you, you know of or have reason to know that may have a material impact on your information security program. So if something changes internally, uh, mm -hmm. you have to go ahead and re re retest everything and make sure that, that everything is still all the vulnerabilities have been checked out, especially the publicly known security vulnerabilities. That all has to be checked. So this one is is as you know. Oh, it's just monitoring. It's it's a it's a big one because if you're not if you're not doing this and documenting that it's being tested uh, regularly through continuous mm -hmm. monitoring, and and the only way to do that honestly is is with a a sim SOC. You know, I'm here to tell you uh, the good news is that all three gentlemen sitting in this screen right now can get that taken care of for any one of these businesses and in no time at all. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's not a pit. I'm just telling, no, I mean, it takes time, but I'm saying the solution is in play. Right. We can already give these folks all of those things yep. nice and tight. Right. And just to put numbers out there, it's going to be, it's going to be tight to try and get it by December. That's why I'm asking who's putting teeth and what what are they like? Because I mean, listen, we've heard the CMMC, we've heard the you know the DFARS, and you know the the folks in the DoD have supposed to been attesting and having written security plans for the last five years. They've all attested to having certain scores, and none of them have. And blah blah blah. blah. Like nobody's getting fined, nobody's going to jail, nobody's doing anything. So I'm trying to find out. Like that was my first question: Who's enforcing this? Where is it coming? Yeah, but once you get breached. That's the problem. Well, it's always a problem then, right? Because then we can look back and say you're a dumbass. You you didn't listen. Excuse my language, but like, no, there, um, there's there's there's. I mean, I can tell you, 
with 100% confidence that there's, you know, dealerships out there that have their staff using their their Gmail. They're, they're collecting information. Yeah. They're oh, all all over the place. Stuff. Right. So, so you're talking about, you know, uh, you know, monumental changes that are going to affect people, staff. I mean, and, and again, you know, average dealership that we work with is probably 75 people. You know, so so to go in there and, um, you know, implement these these changes that that you have to do is, is you know, they're going to have to re relearn, you know, how to do their jobs. It, <laughs> no. I mean, it's going to cause a lot of disruption in their daily process if they go and, and implement this properly mm -hmm. across the board. Oh, yeah. There's no question yeah. about that. But that's yeah. that's true. I think of any business who moves into that direction. Right. There's there's right. a disruption in that play. Yeah. Uh, the you know the the thing i think it's important to convey to the folks out there today though is is like look the the concept of ignorance is bliss and stuff is no longer like you can't claim didn't hear about it didn't know about it oh, no. yeah. um, that that doesn't matter anymore and 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 you know like when you're told about this not me and you but the folks out there and then you don't do something that's called willful negligence oh, and yeah, that's yeah. against the law yeah so the, the nice thing here is, is we're working you're with better the, off keeping your head in the sand we're dealing with the, <laughs> but that the, doesn't excuse you it just means you didn't necessarily we're dealing know. with the, the <laughs> owners the you know of the opera of the dealership so they're 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 all in yeah no I, I, again i'm not saying that in a threatening way i'm trying to say that because there's going to be folks out there who hear these things right mm -hmm. and they're going to be like ah you know we're we got it covered our team's doing fine we're okay we haven't had any issues we don't you know i don't know but there's gonna be bounce back right there's yeah. always yeah. somebody and, yeah. and i'm just trying to say listen just just saying those words is not enough anymore because you're impacting the problem is is it's one thing if you want to mess around with your own business right and your own livelihood but when you start affecting the livelihood of the people who are buying products from you and giving you their information and their finances and all that kind of stuff that's when people like the FTC are not going to take kindly to that right. too terribly much, and you're going to have a problem on your plate. Yeah. Well, the other thing is this, this is probably pushed on by the insurance companies because if you're not following this, then they don't have to pay out. <laughs> Look, on some level, I, I, I dabble with this in my head every day, and guys, I'm, I'm trying to stay on topic with this, but yeah, because we've got to get through this. Something has list. to <laughs> change in that in in somehow. This isn't like this is like kind of like COVID on some level. Like it's the new norm. Like the the hacking. The you, you got to get to the point where you got to know you're gonna need to do these things. At some point, you're gonna get either breached or compromised, and it's gonna either destroy your personal life, your professional life, or both. Uh, maybe it isn't gonna destroy anything, but just cause a whole bunch of disruption and inconvenience. But it's not going away. You're not going to wait oh. this out. Technology oh. is becoming more and more and more enveloped in every aspect of the world. And we are so tied to that information highway. Like, yeah, let's get through I this just want to let's tag everybody out it. there, you know, like, get with it, guys. This isn't that terribly hard. It's not out of the question. Okay, yes, it's an expense you're not used to, but we can find ways to cover that cost through efficiencies using your technology while you're being safe and help you to improve on that so that that cost is absorbed and not even noticed. Yep. All right. Let's keep going here. Yep. Um, Go. Training, staff training, something that we've talked about for years, um, security awareness training. Um, and it's got to be done regularly, monitored, audited. Um, and, and you know, again, this is we do this for all clients, and this this is now something that they're saying that that you need to do. So we've had dealerships tell us, you know what, we don't need that, we don't need that, we don't. Not, not, now you need it. So now everyone has right. to be go through this training process. Um, you have to monitor your service providers. So um, you. So this is kind of what you were saying earlier, uh, David. Um, you, your contracts uh, must mm -hmm. spell out your security expectations and build in ways to monitor your service provider's work and provide for um, periodic reassessments of their suitability for the job. So again, this is this is ongoing, and, and your service providers can be. You know, that's not up to us. It's up for the qualified individual. That, to have that identified in their security policy, who the service provider is, and then go on and and go ahead and and just just make sure that they're they're meeting the standards that you've set them to. So that has to be done as well. 
um, keep information security program current. Um, and again, there's there's emerging no threats all the forget. time. Changes in personnel. Um, there could be changes for for other reasons, but but you have to. Uh, the only constant with that is is um, is, is is change, right? So mm -hmm. you have to keep that documented as well and keep it current. And then the one of the big ones, well, the, the last two here, um, and and uh, this is a big one. If you don't have it already, is is you have to have a uh, you have to create um, a written incident response plan. So mm -hmm. um, again, that alone is something that's going to take time to do. That could take weeks to do. Um, and, and you can't and do it without knowing what what it is you're protecting. Right. Like you can't do it without starting with the assessment, right? Like it, it, all the things you just talked, but don't go straight to the incident response plan. That's not going to help. Exactly. Well, that's it. I mean, so right. the the and again, really a brief overlay is the incident response plan is 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 the plan that you put in place that is is tested um, quarterly. Um, um, you know, I would say semi annually at, at uh, biannually at, at at the least. Um, mm -hmm. Incident response plan on and, and you you go through tabletop exercises on breaches, incidents, and it doesn't have to be a cyber, it could be, you know, a, a disaster, a catastrophe. It could be, you have to have a plan for each one of these. That's one right. plan, it's a good idea to do incident response plans for different things. Like it's a ransomware event, it's a tornado, it's a, you know, whatever, and test out several of those things, right? Because yep. certain systems won't come into play under certain circumstances, and then other times they will, right? right. Like if, if it's a ransomware attack, it might not be the same as if a server, you know, gets flooded in a server room and you know something we, to that effect right, we right. Yeah, I mean, I, you know i'm just saying yesterday right. you know, it was over 100 degrees in there yeah that's yeah. terrible <laughs> so the, the cloud the, the incident response plan <laughs> has to you know under these under these um safeguards rule the uh, it has to have uh, your internal internal processes of your company um the, the process um for the for the incident uh, roles, responsibilities, and levels of decision-making authority. Again, this is standard in incident response yeah. plan, but but these 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 bullets have to be in there. Communication, read, information sharing, both inside and outside the company. When do you involve, you know, um, legal, uh, you know, cyber ex experts, the police, wh whatever. Um, well, who are they? I mean, well, that's, that's you know, the first question is like, who? What number? What? What's who's the person? Exactly. Oh, that was stored on my computer. Well, guess what? Right. Your computer is gone. <laughs> you know, um, but I did read, and I want to clarify, uh, if you're, if the entities involved are collecting information on 5,000 or fewer customers, they're exempt from incident response planning and written risk assessments, as well as annual reporting to the board of directors. Is that true? I have not read that. That's what I was mentioning earlier. Um, I'm and pulling I do this right from the, the FTC Gov site. This is all okay. From, that's fine. I'm going to do some investigation. That could I be from the, that. that could have been from the the original um, safeguards rule when it was first implemented. And no, this I, says I, under the updated, uh, you know, under the updated uh, safeguards rule, the uh, entities collecting information. I mean, I'm reading it right from a report. That that, um, that doesn't sound right, right? As you're saying it, I don't right. It, it seems a little. That's basically saying if you have, and, and I don't know how do we how how do we determine what's the time frame of that five thousand or fewer customers? Right is, right, is that in a year or is that forever or or in the two year time frame? Like so, that right. part of it's not laid out in this okay. particular mentioning of it, and okay. so I'm just asking that question because I want I need to know, and so do you and everybody else. Out there, so and then the <laughs> last one I think is going to you know um be challenging for for some is is require your qualified individual to report to your board of directors right so this individual uh, must report in writing regularly uh at least annually to the board of directors mm -hmm. or governing body uh, if your company doesn't have a board or equivalent the report must go to a senior officer responsible for your security inf information security program um, and it has to address uh an overall assessment of the company's compliance uh within its information security program uh, in addition, it has to cover specific topics related to the program, risk assessment, risk management, uh, control decisions, service provider uh, arrangements, test results, security events, and how management responded, and recommendations for changes in the information security program. So it has to happen at least annually, written up and, and submitted to a board or a whoever the governing body is. So, um, All right, cool. Hey, shameless plug. Winstar yeah. Technologies has a new uh, service offering, virtual CSO, and we do just that. 
We do the risk assessments. We do the policies and procedures. We do the quarterly board meetings. We communicate in writing and we show up at the meetings to discuss those things with the board. Um, we work through all of those high, we work with your internal tech team or your other provider uh, to get the validation that the things that your controls are. We work with the stakeholders in each department and each asset to determine what the risks are and what the, the, the effect and you know impact to the company is, uh, because those are the people who know, not yeah. the executives, right? Yep. Like when this goes away, what happens? Well, don't ask the top guys, ask those people because right. they're the ones who you know affect. So that's something that we have found a great need for for these larger clients of ours, and uh, we've had some really good success with it. Yeah, and they I think like I think I don't know if it's the FTC or if it's if it's if it's NADA.org the um, that has uh, like kind of like a starter template to help you know people get through this process because sure. it's, it, it's it's overwhelming. If you if you are just seeing this for the first time, you need to move now, act now, and and seriously um, get things in place, on board, uh, engage with somebody, uh, hire a consultant, wh whatever it is. But but there's you know, to meet this deadline and be in compliance, you, it's 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 got to be already happening, in, in my opinion. It's amazing to me that 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 that's this year, December 9th, and very few people even know about it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. David, you're working with some some you know, dealerships, right? I mean, you're there's uh, a lot a lot on your plate, right? Well, we have we have one dealership that we've been working with for a long time, but it's so similar to the HIPAA and the CMMC. Yep. I don't feel like it's and PCI. I don't feel like it's all that difficult for us. No, but for those companies who haven't been doing those things, that is going to be oh, a culture change, right? That's, that's what I meant. I don't feel like it's a whole. We new can help them get there pretty quick. Well, yeah. All this compliance, as you mentioned earlier, is very similar. They just mm -hmm. have different regulations for specific things. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. Very good. Yeah, we went a little over today, but I think we had to cut. I think it was worth it. what we had to. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, were there, you know, I mean, my gosh, we could have gone on and on and on. I do want to find out about that 5,000 or fewer stuff, though. Yeah. yeah. Because, just because it'd be good to know. Yep. Absolutely. Very good. All right, guys. Well, thank you. You guys have yes, a good sir. day. Thank you. Talk to you next Everybody week. Everybody be safe. We'll talk to you yeah. soon. See you next week.